Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we're going to dive into some numbers again and see what's going on in this crazy market. And I do appreciate your comments. Not all of them. <laughs> uh, but I did have a, uh, uh, a viewer ask me if I could turn down the intro music, and I didn't know it was too loud. So anyway, I cranked that down. If it's still too loud, let me know. Um, I just, uh, all I see is a red line and then evidently it's blowing your eardrums off so i do appreciate comments i get some weird ones from time to time so i'm going to show you numbers and uh and i i don't make up the numbers so i mean i just find them um good day from italy good morning or it's probably afternoon out there um i just find the numbers and i share them so um my dogs went crazy <laughs> that's funny uh, my dog's going crazy down below my feet here he's chewing on a bone or my shoe or something but anyway, we're going to take it to look at the numbers now and see, you know, is the market really slowing down? Is my mic too hot? Um, I did get an interesting comment the other day. A guy said, I get a lot of spam from YouTube and you're the worst. And I'm thinking, how does YouTube spam people? They don't send you emails. I have zero control over that. And all they said was explain. And he went into a tirade about Google algorithms and IP addresses. I, I don't get it. I don't spam anybody. We have 6,374 homes on the market today for a Tuesday. That's considerably more than what we've seen. But here's the interesting number, folks. In the past seven days, we've had 4,716 new listings come on the market with 3,746 go under contract. Now, as we're looking at this, that 3,746, that's kind of where it's been. Are sales slowing? Um, you know, they are, but by how much? Not much. Here's the red line here. If you just draw a straight line across, um, obviously there were some peaks here where sales were really brisk, but they've been hanging at about 35 to 3,700 for over a year. So these are the actual numbers pulled off the multiple listing service flex mls and you can see that we're at 3700 and we've kind of been there for a long time what's changing is the number of listings now continue to grow people are putting their homes on the market for one reason or another maybe they think rates are going to go up way too high and they uh they're seeing some news that real estate's going to plummet so perhaps this is the time to put it on the market so we're going to kind of deep dive here a little bit see if we can see anything that we should be aware of that's on the horizon now right now the national association of realtors had an article that came out april 28th a more normalized housing market is on the horizon according to them that'll be interesting to see uh they're basically saying uh lawrence yun he's the chief economist for the nar said the dip in contract signing suggests multiple offers will soon dissipate and be replaced by much calmer and normalized market conditions and we will need to see that if you're a buyer. Um, you know, this, these bidding wars, people will stop waiving appraisals. They'll stop waiving inspections and just having a normal transaction. Will you get your price? Probably still will. Uh, will you get multiple offers? Maybe not, but that's not necessarily a, a bad thing, um, especially for real estate agents that have to go through 15 offers and everybody says highest and best, and they put in... Uh, you know, gap language and, and uh, escalation clauses, and, and uh, I pull out my scotch. But Yun Fort, here's, here's the interesting part. Now, this is April 28th when he wrote this article, right? Yun forecasts the 30-year fixed mortgage rate will reach 5.3 by the fourth quarter, resulting in 2022 mortgage rate above 4.9%. The average mortgage rate should jump to 5.4%. He said, newsflash, we're at 5.5 now. He said we we're going to get there by the end of the year. So I think his mortgage forecast is way off. And they were way off last time they tried to give some predictions. So, I, you know, when you're trying to predict a year out, I just stay out of that sandbox and just watch the numbers and see where they're at. Do we still have bidding wars going on? Yes, here we are. And this is... Um, this is April, April 2022, it says here, which was just last week, 57% of homes are going over list price. This is overall everywhere, right? With the most active price range in the three to 400,000, there's probably a lot of condos in that, in that 2,207 homes 
between 400, 500,000, 62%. Now, where it gets hard to decipher anything out of this is you'll see that uh, the average over list is $18,000, but then you look in the small print there and it says the minimum over list was $1 and the maximum was 111000 So you go in and go, well, um, uh, what should we offer on this house? I don't know. I mean, you just literally have to call the agent and go, what are you looking at? How many offers do you have? And, uh, and so on. Now, you can drill down in an area that's kind of interesting right now, and that's the over 55 areas. So I'm going to look at Sun City and Sun City West and look at the bidding activity and it is still up there it went up it has been going down and it went up and it went up by in the three to four hundred thousand range but their numbers are a little lower three to four hundred thousand you've got one that went over the list by nine bucks and another one went over the list by seventy two thousand but they're still shopping out there so i don't see a dip in fact we're starting to see that uh, many people that are retired now are selling their bigger homes and moving into a smaller place in these over 55 communities. So I wouldn't sit out there and say, oh, things are looking bleak. This is not good. I won't be able to sell my home. The numbers there are not showing it. Now, take a look at some of the Cromford data that's here. And here's the Cromford Supply Index. And there's my mug right in the way. And it's showing that supply is coming up, right? Normal balanced market supply is 100 right here, and we're way down here in the basement. We're still down in the basement. Starting to come up. Demand is down at 100. So that's considered normal demand, but we've seen we're at 3,700. We're just hovering right there. We didn't go from 3,700 to 2,000. We're at 3,700 homes every seven days. The lowest we've ever been is 2,700. So could we end up there? We could. We're not yet, though. And the overall market is showing that the uh, index is coming down. It's right now sitting at 385, still pretty healthy for sellers. I like to look at the daily count now for active listings, and you can see it's spiking up, spiking up pretty good. Um, it's got a long, long way to go to start affecting pricing, but right now it's looking uh, favorable. It's going in a favorable direction. Uh, the price range that I see most of the increases on are between 400 and 600,000. Here's the active listing counts right here, which is compared year over year. We're at 6,027. Um, and we saw this morning we're at 6,374. So pretty much the same number. It varies by one to 300 per day. But we're on our way up. Um, but we've got a long way to go to get there. If we go up to 2018 here and take a look at what listings were. This time was 15,623. How long is it going to take for us to get there? Maybe September at the current rate. Maybe then we'll see some of these bidding wars subside. The 30 year fixed mortgage rate is now over 5.5. .5 and it's interesting. And what they're saying is today's new installment of pain isn't readily attributable to any new development. In fact, the entirety of the rate spike only has a few basic ingredients discussed recently, but a long time frame in which to play out. That process should receive some important new information this week when the Fed unveils details about its balance sheet normalization plans. They're going to say that on Thursday. Normalization in this con context is just another way that the Fed will buy fewer bonds, Fed bonding, bond buying, so the factors that kept rates as low as they were. We know the announcement's coming. We just don't know how quickly the bond buying reduction will occur. This will happen on Wednesday afternoon. Between now and then and afterwards as well, rate probability remains probable. Volatility remains probable. So they're saying, you know, <clears throat> it's just going to be up, down, up, down for a while until they get this figured out. And it may be that kind of a year. And maybe by the end of 2022, we will be at 5.3%. And maybe the... Uh, NAR guy is correct, so we're just spiking up now. Maybe we're we're going to go down, but uh, nobody can outguess the Fed. And so you've got the Fed that's you know buying bonds, but it's the market, you know, people buying bonds and Treasuries that de determine where rates are actually going to land. Running it out too. Glad I held out buying. These prices are going to drop. It's going to be a while. I know there's a lot of you hanging out there waiting for prices to drop, but. You're seeing the numbers right here. It's going to be a while. Maybe it's going to be a year and a half. Um, it's not going to be this summer. So 
Chisel, interest rates in mainland Europe are lower. Drawing any lessons from those places? That's interesting. So did they try uh, going up in Europe and then they found out they had to pull back? Because um, they're certainly going through a lot more hardship right now with this nonsense in Ukraine than we are, um, especially with fuel. Um, Betta said, we did buy and we have time. So um, there's another interesting development that's coming out here. It's a direct result of COVID, and that is desktop appraisals. Um, they're talking about uh, FHFA is going to allow desktop appraisals, appraisals that can be performed from a desktop without physical property inspection. And this would only be for conventional loans. And that's not a bad thing. And where it's not a bad thing is out in some of these rural areas where you're buying a home and it takes you three weeks to get the inspector to come out there. Um, there's so much information now that you can see. Inspectors, basically, they just, I mean, appraisers, they come out and they just measure your house to make sure it's what you said it was. And they look and see if it's, you know, if it's in decent shape. And they leave. And they go home. Most of their work's done by pulling comps. Now, being an appraiser is hard. It's hard work. Um, it's amazing how much, you know, a bank will give you a deck that high of what they're asking for. And each lender has different appraisal requirements. So now the FHFA is coming out saying, you know, desktop appraisals, uh, we're going to go ahead and make it permanent, not just a COVID thing. So you're sitting out there in, in St. John's, Arizona, and you sold a house, and the appraiser's probably got to come from Payson or Phoenix. He's probably not going to get out there for three weeks. Now he can log on. He can look at your photos. He can go to Google Earth. He can look at your 360 walkthrough. He can see that your agent was smart enough to include room dimensions in the photos and in the documents he can tell the condition of the home pretty safe for him to make a decent appraisal so i'm uh, i'm a fan of that i don't think that's a bad idea so i hope that continues so here are the most popular cities for home buyers in 2022 and places people can't wait to leave i show you those cities is not going to surprise you uh where do home builders want to live number five prescott arizona um and they say that the average price up there is 622000 I love Prescott. Uh, I wish I could live up there. You never know. I may end up there. Uh, Prescott, Arizona, 622 Number one, Punta Gorda, Florida. Medium home price, 430000 They show some photos. There's the house in Florida. And there's uh, more Florida. And here's Prescott. And this is up at Watson Lake. Now, I've been to Watson Lake. There's a neat little... Uh, um rv park up there right next to watson lake and that's just beautiful but i'm gonna tell you you know the water level is really low now and when you get down and you look at that water, it's all kind of gunky i wouldn't want to fall out of my kayak i guess is what i'm trying to tell you so it makes a beautiful picture but it's kind of disgusting where home buyers want to leave number one san jose california number two seattle i don't blame you getting out of seattle it's places turning into a armpit and I love Seattle. I'm from there. Uh, Washington, D.C., they want to get out. Columbus, Georgia. Fargo, North Dakota rolls in at number 10. Um, so that's the top house uh, locations where people want to live and the places they just want to get the heck out of Dodge. So it's an interesting little look at the market. Um, stay tuned. Um, hey, before you leave, hit the like button. I'm not leaving yet. But stay tuned. I'm working on um, some different changes in YouTube. I'm still going to be doing my morning show and uh, sprinkling in some different uh, um, content over the course of the week. But I got a big project coming up and uh, I'm teaming with some people that you know, and it should be a bucket of fun. So it might be a couple weeks trying to work it out. And uh, I know you're going to like it. So I appreciate your comments. Hang in there. Try to make them nice and sweet. And if you don't, I'll still reply. Have a great Tuesday. Take on the rest of the week.